Hello friends, today we've got 15 free indie games that you can play right now on your PC. They are free to play, but some are pay what you want, especially the ones on itch.io. So if you check any of these games, really like them, you can always throw some money the creator's way afterwards. Freshman or first year of university can be a lonely and daunting time. This eponymous and autobiographical game captures this experience by retelling a night in the freshman life of creator Nina Freeman. The painterly art makes the game feel like a memory from the past, and the story feels very intimate and real. Why settle for real life tall people basketball when you could enjoy the clumsy madness of regular human yeah, basketball? A 2 to 10 local multiplayer game in which you control and face off against other giant mech and some b-ball. Moving the mechs oh, consists of platforming oh, inside their giant bodies. The results are silly, but likely to induce many laughs and frustrated screams. Make money, and when you're done, make some more. And then some more, and some more again. Why? Well, there isn't actually a point to it. You're just addicted and are going to keep making virtual money forever. We guess it's pretty political when you think of it like that. The hottest date is Hot Date, a speed date with a pink pug. There's not too much to explain. You're having a chat with a dog and sussing it out as a romantic partner. It can be hilarious and also go some places you don't expect. We'd also like to point out the creator's name is George Batchelor. Funny, huh? It's just made its way onto Steam Early Access, but Dungeon Souls debuted in April as a free demo that is still playable now. The roguelike setup is familiar, but well executed, and crawling through the dark dungeons feels like you're traversing into the unknown. This must mean that my employers are no longer with us. A game essay, Luxury Simulator shows us a capitalist apocalypse in which wealth has been concentrated into so few hands the system fell apart. The game is a walk through one of the last great mansions that is full of history that humanity failed to learn from. Nought is an easy on the eye wander through the deserts of Mars. It can be played solo or in a duo, but either way you're probably going to have some foolishly fun times running around in some very flip prone 1950s American style cars. Void is a hack and slash roguelike with some pretty pink and blue transparent geometry and a subtle use of layers. Animations are really slick too, and remind of the highly awaited Hyperlight Drifter. Path of the Imperium Pyre is a first person story that takes about 10 minutes to complete. Seeking refuge on a sci-fi cargo ship as a prodigal prince on the run, you investigate your surroundings and are then prompted with an important decision. Worth at least one replay to see what happens if you chose differently. The duo behind Risk of Rain is working on a new project dubbed Deadbolt. It was only meant for a small group of people, but a rough demo with the first five stages is available online. Playing as what we believe is death cloaked in an everyday brown coat, the game is a 2D action shooter that looks a lot like Not a Hero. Hotel Paradise is an oxymoron that this game has no fear in pointing out. Given a room number, it's your goal to trek the randomly generated and illogically organised halls to find your room. It sounds annoying, but at least now the outcome that your room is impossible to find has been removed in the latest patch. The pot of gold at the end of this hellish rainbow is the randomised contents of what's in your room. Daniel Linton is kind of the king of indie games. Well, in our eyes at least. His Ludum Dari 32 effort, A Knife Made of Whispers, only lets the player attack when cast in a circle of white light. The light comes from a lantern, which can be moved around the platforming stages. It's smart and also has some heart, with an unheralded story. Another entry to Ludum Dari 32, Bloodshot sort of looks like super hot with a side-on view and a bold dash of pink. The action shooter revolves around blood. 
enemies awake to your blood, so you shoot it at them. You also donate it to injured civilians in need. Hold on to your erythrocytes. Definitely one of the most polished and lengthier games on this list, The Blind Griffin is an Otomus set in Roaring Twenties, California. It's got bootlegging, magical training, some shrewd references, 10 different endings, and of course, romance. Also, the game is a well-researched period piece that makes it feel very believable. We've both worked in supermarkets at some point, so scanning items on a never-ending conveyor belt in Forever brings us back to some darker headspaces. In the end, Forever really just pokes fun at the futility of scanning food with some ridiculous and uncontrollable physics. You can play today on your PC. That wasn't even right. I was, but I haven't really figured out what I'm going to say yet. Okay. Play, but some of these games are on each where it's pay what you want. So if you check any of these games, like it, you can always... See. They are free to play, but some of them pay what you want, so, uh, especially the ones on itch.io. So if you play any of these games, really like them, you can always help the creators out later with some money. And maybe I should, like, fix that. That's a wrap. Savlaki. Got them all. Tempanyaki.